And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Timo Sejuani. It's like I've called Puff Cap Plunder in the past, but I'm going to go with Timo Sejuani because that's just kind of like the deck name that more people use for this one. Uh, we were talking about this though, just you know, like uh, here right before we hit record. This is a really fun deck. It's not necessarily like the best deck kind of thing, it's not like a tier one deck. It doesn't usually put up great win rates. But every time you win with it, it's super exciting and super satisfying, and it's a really fun deck to play. Basically, what we're going to be doing here is trying to give our opponent a lot of Puff Caps. We're going to have um, Puff Cap Peddler be a big part of that. Every time we cast a spell, we give them three Puff Caps. And then, of course, we have Teemo in here that whenever it will Nexus Strike, it'll either give them five Puff Caps or be able to double, double them up, which is really what we want, a leveled up Teemo doubling up those Puff Caps. And then with those puff caps, um, they can draw puff caps every single turn. And each turn that they do, that's Nexus damage. Our Ballistic Bot also creating the ignition every turn now, this new card will be able to deal Nexus damage. And Nexus damage is really important each and every turn because that's how we level up our Sejuani. So once they've once we've damaged the enemy Nexus five different rounds, we have a leveled up Sejuani. And then the first uh, time that we deal Nexus damage to an opponent each round, then it's going to frostbite all enemies, which is a really powerful effect, and really why our um, that's really the power of our deck is that leveled up with Sejuani. So basically, when we have a leveled up Sejuani in play, they draw their card for turn. If that card has a puff cap on it, boom, all their things are frostbitten, so they can't even like open attack against us. So that's a really powerful combination. Uh, let's see, Clump Wumps or Chump Wumps also going to give us some mushroom clouds in there to help us out. Um, we're going to have another new card in here, Hexcore Foundry. Round start, all players draw one. So basically, we're each drawing two cards a turn, and that just gives us you know, two two opportunities for them to draw puff caps and double that up. Starlet Seer can also make one of some of our units very large by granting the top alley in our deck plus one, plus one. And then we'll have some cards like Troll Chant and Elixir of Iron that can protect our units because these units, Ballistic Bot, Starlet Seer, and Puff Cat Peddler are all important to our deck, and they're all cards that we just want to stay in play, and we don't want them to die in combat or anything, so we need some protection. So that's what our Troll Chant and Elixir of Iron does. Kind of the same with Teemo, too. Uh, let's see, that's kind of about it. That's our deck. We got some removal, so that's good. We learned that from the last game. We need, we need interaction, right? We need ways to protect our things, and we need removal. We got both of those, so it should be a lot of fun. Let's go play it on over in ranked. Let's go play some Teemo. All right, we're playing against Gohard. So Gohard, I, th I think this is kind of like the, the deck that we want to play. We want we want to play a longer game. Gohard, they draw a lot of cards, so that's kind of good for us with them drawing into Puff Caps. Um, we don't really need to start with any of those. So we're gonna, we're gonna ship them all back. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, I, I'm still streaming every day. Alright, we'll just lead with the bot. Yeah. Yeah. Humanity is obsolete. This'll send them running. Safety disengaged. Okay, so I, we could try to go for the Teemo hit right now. Yeah, I think we do. A lot of times I like wait with Teemo with this kind of deck with like, you know, playing Gohards and everything. I try to, I, you know, like I want to wait, but we don't have any Puff Cat Peddlers, so we don't really have any other way to, um, You know, like any other way to like give them puff caps, but usually I want to wait and wait till we have a leveled up Teemo first. Join me if you want to live. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, you're usually so. Yeah, you're usually on before before I get started then. Cool. Can you improve perfection? Uh, let's see. Keep up, keep up. So 
So there we go. See, draw more cards, draw more puff caps. That's good. And we'll just keep on doing Nexus damage. I'll go ahead and Mystic Shot their Spray Fin. Um, I kind of assume my Teemo is going to die, though. And. Hmm. With the assumption that my Teemo is going to die, I wonder if I should block with it. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to block this thing. And then we're going to go Tavern Keeper here, heal it. So basically we just had our tower, you know, like the Tavern Keeper basically just killed their 2-2. While also playing it. Um, hmm. Guess they have Glimpse Beyond. Maybe that's what the spray fin grabbed was Glimpse Beyond. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna let them draw the two. I know I can keep them from drawing two, but I think I want to keep the Mystic Shots to be able to kill a Twisted Fate or another Spray Fin if they play either of those. Yeah. Yep. No surprise there. You did your best. I hope they give me priority again. Good. What's up, Sejuani? Where are you at? Three? Okay, we can make set 24 this turn. I'm always up for a round or two. I like doing this in response to just make it one last card for them drawing like a glimpse beyond. Or like just maybe the, the top card's glimpse beyond. That would give them good value. Oh, my turn. Sorry, opponent. Grassly undying. Hard to get rich. Man, these go hard decks are crazy. Meat bigger than you. <laughs> what will you have? Outside. Looks, it kind of looks like that we're, yeah, like they have salvage here too. Like it kind of looks like that we're just going to get, um, you know, kind of killed by just a whole bunch of card advantage on their side. That's what it's looking like. run out of cards and everything. Like a fish in water. <laughs> do I use Only the Do I use the pump spell to to keep the 3 1 alive? This card right here, Fury of the North. Do I keep? Do I use Fury of the North to keep Kindly Tavern Keeper alive? Wait, was this a twenty a seven eight that I just? Was this one a seven eight? It shouldn't have been, right? But was it? I oh, know it kind of looked weird. If I kill you, I don't you. Yeah, definitely going to be trying to like attack for lethal for sure. I hope they don't have. They've played two Gohards, I think. So if they have two more. That's bad for me. How about another round? So 
would make the most sense to attack like this. One, and then I have Aftershock. I Come on, Aftershock. I think we got this. Yeah, I think we got this. I think that last turn... They, they couldn't have played... They should have played, like, the Salvage the last turn. I think they got a little greedy with, with drawing too many cards th this previous turn. They need to play a few more blockers than what they did. But they didn't, so we got it. They thought that they were safe. But the old Pump Spell, Burn Spell combo. The other thing that was kind of weird about that game is that they, they definitely had that Go Hard in hand, and they passed... They just kept one... Spell mana available, and they passed me instead of trying to kill my 3-1 at the end of turn. So we're playing against some Overwhelm. They're going to be having some big threats. We do have a couple of Harsh Winds, which would be important. Um, I kind of like this hand, honestly. I'm going to just keep all of this. Even like Sejuani, we're going to have the we have the attack token on even turns. Oh, I don't like second Sejuani. But I thought that I could maybe keep the Sejuani with us having like some early stuff to do anyway. And that um, Sejuani could be a powerful card. That's not so bad. Yeah, that's not so bad at all. Trading our, our one mana card for their three mana card. Could be worse. A Terratim Improvement seems like this is going to be pretty awesome against the Enraged Yeti. Right? Like, they play Enraged Yeti, I copy it and make it a 6-6. Six, six. Man, I do want to play this Tavern Keeper to block the 3-3, three, three, but I guess I'm going to go bot. I am superior life form. Took the bait. I wish I would have played Tavern Keeper now. I love that Elixir of Iron. That means I can kind of like block with Peddler and, and Elixir of Iron. Catch. See, that's pretty sweet. Winter, take you. Boo. That is not sweet. <laughs> Okay, block there. I'm a peddler, not a meddler. No, stop. Do I not? Oh, I'm not gonna have mana because I'm gonna spend both of it on that. So I take eight. I don't want to take eight. I guess I block. Maybe I should be trading the peddler away. Good card. Natural chant. So, I mean, like, these... These interaction spells in this game are incredible. And when you're playing decks that don't have any of them, like our, our Victor Fizz deck, you're just not going to be winning. So we learned with that. Jump up. 
Okay, so this costs, so Fury of the North is four, that's five, that's six, seven. Okay, so I cannot play Ignition because I'm probably gonna want to have all three of these spells. Probably, let's see. So I Mystic Shot there, three, one. And then I go Fury of the North. So I'm gonna take four Overwhelm there. I Mystic Shot that, or I guess Mystic Shot the three, two. Fury of the North, my Sejuani to block Alpha Wild Claw. And then I'm kind of stuck there. The Alright, let's lead with this. Okay. Kind of doing like troll chant check, right? That's what I'm doing there. Oh! Oh! Mm, that's not good. That made life worse. Playing a 7-6 Overwhelm and a 5-5 five five this turn. That made life worse. Five there with that enraged yeti. I've only dealt damage one turn. Well, that's not very many turns. I'm kind of betting on drawing harsh winds. <laughs> That's what I'm kind of betting on. See? Good things can happen. They drew a puff cap. Now that's two out of five. We're getting there. Do I want to kill Trindamir? I guess I kind of have to. I guess I kind of have to. I guess that was the problem with the Culling Strike on my Teemo immediately was, um, you know, Teemo didn't get to do any damage. I haven't done very much Nexus damage as far as leveling up Sejuani. I need to do that. So that's three rounds. Next turn will be four. We have another Harsh Winds in the deck. We have one more. Yeah, we got two. Got two harsh ones for a reason. That's that's just the next card we have to draw. We have to draw harsh ones. No, that's not a harsh ones. We're so close. Do not stand in my way. We're so close. To having leveled up Sejuani and you know, frostbiting them turn after turn. Okay. Team up is. 
Probably a deck that doesn't have Troll Chant. I think I'm looking at all these. I know Aftershock can kill these, but it's really expensive at killing those at four mana. I'm gonna take the hit. I'm gonna save Thermogenic Beam. Because it has it has a lot of potential. Um, it's five puff caps, I think that's okay. Oh. Starlet Seer. Witness perfection, meat bags. Yeah, and I like how this Thermogenic Beam can take down the Ballistic Bond. I like that. Two mana left. not super likely they have another one cost spell to protect Fizz, as you can see there. This will be a good winter. Prime and ready. Tell me mask, secure me tail, start to die. All right, Adam. Adam betting the thousand channel points on a win. I could do that. I think we got this one. Can you improve perfection? <laughs> they, they talk so much. They talk like when you cast the spell and also when the spell resolves. Unnecessary amount of talking over here. Okay, so we'll have Sejuani next turn, and I'll have Troll Chant also. Yeah, like that's that's what they should fit about, fix about this Ballistic Bot. <laughs> it says one of its voice lines. Bow to no one. <laughs> when, when you create the spell, and then whenever you cast it, and then whenever it resolves. So three times a turn. For a voice line. It's a little much. It's a good amount of damage. Put him down to five. Just gonna go with the shared spoils. I think they should, like, I don't know if they're planning on playing the Ballistic Bot, but if so, like, they should play the Ballistic Bot before that. But I guess they have a different plan. Yeah, I feel pretty good about this one, especially with having the Harsh Winds. Yeah, it could have been a 3-4. Maybe they didn't want to hear the voice line. <laughs> Frostbite's really good in this metagame. Uh, what's wrong with Zap? You said Zap is broken? I mean, Zap Sprayfin's a better card than... like it, Is Zap Sprayfin a better card than Shadow Assassin? How Shadow Assassin got nerfed? Was Sprayfin actually a better card? I mean, especially like with the printing of Gohard, it, it probably is. I, I don't think that... So, I'm not saying that Sprayfin should be nerfed. Basically, what I'm saying is... Sprayfin's maybe better than Shadow Assassin anyway. They should just put. Sh they should buff Shadow Assassin back up to a 2 2. That's what I'm saying. They don't need to nerf Sprayfin. I'm saying. Shadow Assassin did not need to go to a 1 2. Ooh, this is gonna be tough. 
Zoe, Aurelian, Sol, Garen. All right, what do we got? We got Aftershock. Great. Love seeing that to destroy the landmark. And then we got these two cards, which are both really cool. Shared Spoils, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to turn on Shared Spoils. But it is a great card. Um, I'm going to mulligan it, though. But I, I do really like it. It is a great card. Our deck could always use that card advantage, and it, it works really well with Starlet Seer. We're going to kind of see if they play uh, the Grand Plaza, and if so, we'll Aftershock. If not, we'll have other things. Kind of want to play this Teemo to be able to block Zoe, because they am creating super cool star charts every turn it is not exactly fair. I, I don't want to use the Aftershock on that, though. You pick them, I plant them, kid. Humanity is obsolete. Safety disengaged. The safety was never on. Let's do it over there! Candle scouts are never afraid! Oh, if mushrooms could talk. I could definitely see copying this trickster and making a 4 4 elusive. I could definitely see doing that. Alright, it's already two for Sejuani. doing that. Maybe one another peddler. We have a nice little engine going. Alright, so they have single combat. Garen levels up. Oh, I should should I do the I should probably do the I should do the yeah, I should have done the mystic shot first. Yeah, I should have done the mystic shot first, because then maybe Garen wouldn't have leveled up. Would it have? I guess it still would have. What's up, Timo? You own what you take. Prepare for anything. Just kind of awkward because I can't, you know, after shock and play Timo, but I, I think it's just too important to play Timo. They could take a lot of damage this turn. But 
Boo. So a hush. So close to killing them. They probably play a unit before attacking. Hopefully it works. Hopefully no more single combats. Let it happen. No. Play like a pill cascade, draw a card. Oh, I didn't get priority again? Oh, I thought I was going to get priority again and then I was going to frostbite the Radiant Guardian. This will be a good winter. I'm going to play the Sejuani on their turn. Frostbite this Radiant Guardian on their turn. All right, there we go. That'll do it. That's a good win. Basically, never beat that deck. Never underestimate the power of the scouts code. That was a good win. I have a, a deck in the first slot tomorrow already. So if you'd like your deck in like the second or third, you know, if there's any specific slot you wanted after that. All right, we're back to playing Go Hard again. Um, little Teemo is cool, but dies to go hard. We're going to send that back. Um, Foundry could be kind of decent. They already draw a million cards anyway. So this will just kind of help us keep up with them, because they're going to have like 10 cards in hand all the time anyway. Um, so I kind of like that. But... Will we get too far behind, right? Like, will they just, like, play a whole bunch of units and we get too far behind if I play this Hexcore Foundry? That's kind of the question mark. I'm going to try it out, though. You know, it's I like trying new, new stuff. Could certainly backfire, but I like trying new stuff, so I'm going to try it out. All right, Starless here is perfect. We got you down for tomorrow. Gonna wait on you, Timo. You're just a little 1 1. Don't want to play the little 1 1s in, into the Go Hard deck. Puffcat Peddler, awesome. I love it. I'm going to play this card first, though, so I can play Peddler next turn with a little bit more mana to protect it, and I can also have all these Mushroom Clouds and stuff. Something for all. Hopefully that means they're burning the card from the Pool Shark. That was not the card from the Pool Shark. Yeah, so the problem is, is they're going to be able to find all their Gohards a lot faster with the Foundry. They're going to have a million of them. And so therefore, pack your bags. So I, I need to get a lot of Puff Caps on their, on their cards first. <laughs> they just have, they just had all three of their Gohards in hand. So their first, their first six cards... Or I guess it was, let's see, they just put six cards back, so ten. Their first ten cards they drew were three three Gohards in their first ten cards. 
That's pretty fair. Oh, if mushrooms could talk. Oh, whoops, am I right? Yuppie, I talk to spirits. This is my role. Yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of dead. <laughs> We're kind of dead here. If they if they just drew another go hard, because that's you know five nexus damage, and then open attack with all these. We're kind of dead. If they have that. A game. Go on then. Watch the ball, folks. Kind of need a mystic shot. This twisted fate. That could allow them just to play another twisted fate though. Which that card's also devastating. I think I just have to bank on them not finding the Packer Bags immediately. Well, that's not good. My 4 1 should be attacking also. Just trade, you know, just try to trade with things that don't just kill me. You pay first. Twist Fate's about to be at 7. Oh no, 8. Yeah, never mind. The pool shark. <laughs> I guess you can win them all. Okay, so maybe the Foundry isn't a good idea in this matchup. Kind of need that three extra mana. Like a fish in water. <laughs> yeah, this didn't work out at all. Okay, so good good lesson learned. Don't just throw down Foundry on turn three in this matchup. Got to like set up like your whole game plan and all that kind of stuff first. So I, I wish I would have mulliganed that card, but that's a good good lesson learned, right? Like I didn't realize that before. Oh, this is not, yeah, this is not a bad matchup. I think this is a good matchup for us. I think that combination of their their hand was really good. They had, you know, three go hards immediately in hand. A very good hand. That combination with me, you know, wasting the three mana on the hex core foundry instead of like, you know, being able to set up and, and everything. That was, yeah, like, you know, those two combinations, we're gonna lose this game, but you know, we, we, we won this matchup earlier. And I think in general, this is like a, a really good matchup for our deck. But uh, I'm going to lose this game. You don't win 100% of your good matchups. And we learned. Something for all of you. Yeah, it, cer it certainly hurt that they had all th all three of their Gohards in their top ten cards, and they had them all immediately. Certainly hurt. But yeah, that's so. Um, I think the Foundry could be good, but I think the Foundry for that matchup even, I think it could be good, but I think you have to play that a lot lo a lot later in the game whenever cuz cuz they have they have so much card draw, they're going to have a lot of cards anyway, we don't. But I think that and it's like we'll run out of cards before they do. But I think that you have to still get on the board fast, try to stabilize and also get them a lot of puff caps fast, right? You have to focus on those two things first in that game. And so like we need to focus on getting like peddler and protection and stabilizing the board and all that kind of stuff first. And then Hexcore Foundry is our late game card for that matchup to, after we have them have a bunch of puff caps, let them draw more, but then let us refill also. It's not something that we should be playing on turn three because then that we're just going to get too far behind, as you saw with that. We can't, we just can't take turn three off, is basically what I'm saying. Like, that's a very important turn. And uh, as far as stabilizing and, and uh, winning the game, that's a very important turn. And we can't take that turn off to play this landmark. Um, 
as you see there, you just, just get too far behind. So good lesson there. Um, I kept it, you know, wanted to kind of see how that would work. And, um, you know, it makes sense, you know, looking back at it. So next time, if you have the hex core founder in your opener, just mulligan it. Um, yeah, mulligan, mulligan it in that matchup. But it's a it's a card that, you know, playing it on turn eight or turn nine or something like that, it could be very useful having them draw into like those more puff caps to finish the game and getting you that little extra gas to to help finish them off as well. But it's not something you can afford to play on turn three. And I think that's probably the case for every matchup, honestly. You know, the more like I'm, you know, watching that game play out and thinking about it in just any other matchup, it's probably the same thing. Because like these kind of cards, your Ballistic Bot, your Starlet Seer, your Puff Cat Peddler, they they require a lot of setup. You need to play them early. You need to keep them out for a while. You need to protect them with Troll Chain, Elixir of Iron, that kind of stuff. And so just just kind of like how I watch that game play out and think about how that would play out against other decks, I think it's the same kind of thing. I think you have to um, have your early turns be your setup in this kind of deck and um, focus on that. And so I think I, I think that you should mulligan Hexcore Foundry against everybody, honestly. I think this is kind of like similar to like a Relentless Pursuit kind of card in this deck where it it can reward you for, for having your setup and it rewards you for doing you know, for your deck doing what's supposed to do later on in the game, but it's not something you can play right away, right? Like, you're not going to Relentless Pursuit on turn three. <clears throat> same, I think that's the same principle here. So I think that was a really good lesson to learn. So there we go. So that's that's uh, Timo Sejuani, though. I think I was very impressed with the deck just overall. Uh, I, you know, really like the Harsh Winds in here and just Frostbite in general. Um, but yeah, I was pretty impressed with this. I think that I think that it got some really good upgrades. I think that Aftershock and Ballistic Bot are very good upgrades for the deck. The Iterative Improvement was very useful as well. I liked the, the list that we had. I liked the, the Kindly Tavern Keepers. They did a lot of work for me. Um, so yeah, I like I like this list. Um, and, uh, you know, like that was, um, you know, basically we went, we went three and one, which, you know, we won 75% of our games. That, that fourth game, or that fifth game, sorry. I kind of don't really count that because I, I really just made the complete wrong decision with keeping the Hexcore Foundry and going with that and, and everything, you know. So I, I really just kind of threw that game away. But it was a good learning game um, as far as going on to, to future games. But, like, if you kind of don't count that because I just, you know, completely took the wrong line, um, you know, then the the other, like, kind of more real-ish games, you know, went 3-1, and one, which was a really good record. Um, yeah, I, I would like to have more frost frostbite in the deck in general, like more you know like flash freeze harsh winds. I would like to have more of those cards because they are amazing. But looking at the list, it does look kind of difficult to fit them in. Um, I, I I don't know. Maybe it's better than thermogenic beam, but maybe not. Like the thermogenic beam did a good job of like killing champion, like killing a fizz earlier. Um, it's hard to fit the, those cards in, but they are amazing. But you kind of have to play aftershock. Mystic shot is pretty great. It's you don't really want to get rid of mystic shots. Um, you know, you're looking at like your your uh, your unnecessary cards are like your Hexcore Foundry, your Thermogenic Beam, your Iterative Improvement. Besides that, besides those four cards, I think you kind of want to play all the rest of these. All the rest of them are like the three ofs or the two harsh winds, and I think you want all of those. So I think like those are your like kind of four flex slots: the Hexcore Foundry, Iterative Improvement, and Thermogenic Beam. But. Uh... So if you want, if you do want more Frostbite cards, because Frostbite is really good right now. Fiora Shen, um, but a lot of Fiora decks in general, like Fiora Zoe, super popular. Like Lee Sin Zoe is popular. Um, the Overwhelm decks, like your Sejuani, Trindamir, kind of Overwhelm, uh, Darius, like those decks, those are really popular. Frostbite's amazing there as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of good, a lot of good decks for Frostbite these days. All right, but that's that's Timo Sejuani, fun deck to play. We we learned some good stuff, and and it also looked good. It looked very solid. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button. Uh, leave those comments if you've been playing this deck, if you've been having good success with it. Um, if you yeah, you got any uh, tips or tricks or anything or or any kind of uh, cards that you really like? Do you play more Frostbite? Uh, do you only play the two Harsh Winds? You know, leave leave those kind of comments. I love hearing that feedback. It really helps. All right, but that's all I got here for this one. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.